Yesu. Today we are going to see about the power of resurrection. Leo tunakwenda kuona kuhusu nguvu ya ufufuo. The power of resurrection. Nguvu ya ufufuo. What is the power of resurrection? Nguvu ya ufufuo ni nini? You can read from uh, Matthew 27. Waweza kusoma kitabu cha Matthew 45 to 45 you'll read and then I will tell you where you will uh you will stop. Utasoma mstari wa 47 alafu nitakwambia. Matthew 27 Matthew 20 as from uh, 45 kuanzia mstari wa 47 and then Matthew again 28 alafu Matthew 28 from verses 11 kuanzia mstari wa 18 and then I will stop I will direct you and I tell you where to stop alafu nitakwambieni mahali pa kuishi what is the power of resurrection nguvu ya ufufuo maana yake it is the power which raised Jesus from the dead nguvu iliyomfufua Kristo kutoka kwa wafu You know death could conquer Jesus. Unajua kifo hakikumzuia wala kumshinda Yesu. The grave could not hold Jesus. Kaburi halikuweza kumshikilia Yesu. Because of the power of resurrection. Kwa sababu ya nguvu ya ufufuo. It is the power which raised Jesus from the dead. Ni nguvu iliyomfufua Yesu kutoka kwa And this power God has given us. Na nguvu hii Mungu ametupatia. It is the wonder working power of God. Ni nguvu ifanyayo miujiza ya Mungu in the world. Katika dunia. It is the wonder working power. Ni nguvu itendayo miujiza. God has given us to uh, as God has given the church. Ambayo Mungu amelipatia kanisa. It is the wonder working power. Ni nguvu itendayo maisha. Which can change his life. Iwezaye kubadilisha maisha. You know no one can change somebody. Unajua hakuna yoyote awezaye kumbadilisha yoyote. No one can change a sinner. Hakuna awezaye mbadilisha mwanadamu. No one can change a, a robber. Hakuna mtu awezaye kumbadilisha. No one can change a thief. Hakuna mtu awezaye kumbadilisha mwanadamu. No one can change a killer. Hakuna mtu awezaye kumbadilisha muuaji. So was a killer. Hivyo Sauli alikuwa ni muuaji. Only the power of resurrection. Lakini ni nguvu pekee ya ufufuo. Only the power of God. Ni nguvu pekee ya Mungu. Change the power. Iliyombadilisha na kuwa Paulo. And be a total different person. Na akawa mtu tofauti kabisa. Ah a hana of a vessel of hana chombo chenye heshima and even we are remembering paul na hii hata sisi tukamkumbuka paulo is the power of god ni nguvu ya mungu which changed his soul iliyombadilisha the power of resurrection ni nguvu ya ufufuo the power of resurrection na nguvu ya ufufuo bring things to life inaleta vitu katika uzima things which were dead vitu vilivyokuwa vifu things which you have no life vitu ambavyo havikuwa na uzima Can gets life vinaweza vikapata uzima if the power of resurrection kama nguvu ya operate in those things ikifanya kazi juu ya mambo haya so we are speaking about a, a, a really power kwa tunazungumzia nguvu halisi the power which is with you nguvu ambayo yuko pamoja nawe the power which is with us nguvu ambayo yuko pamoja nasi hallelujah 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 maybe that power is dormant in Labda your life labda nguvu hiyo haiko Ha, haifanyi kazi maishani mwako but today lakini leo hii we are going to stimulate that power tunakwenda kuichochea nguvu hiyo we are going to activate that power tunakwenda kuyamsha nguvu in your life maishani mwako so that you can experience changes in your life ili kwamba uyaone mabadiliko maishani mwako if you are not experience changes in your life kama hauyaoni mabadiliko maishani mwako it is because you haven't known ni kwa sababu haujajua that you have power kwamba unazo nguvu you are working with power unatembea na nguvu if you are not changes in your business kama hakuna mabadiliko kwenye biashara yako no changes inside you kama hakuna mabadiliko ndani yako it is because you haven't known ni kwa sababu haujajua that you have power kwamba unazo nguvu which can change your life iwezaye kubadili maisha which can change your inner man iweza kubadili utu wako ndani which can change your family iweza kubadili which can change your circumstances iweza kubadili hali yako which can change your situation iweza kubadili mazingira yako we are going to see that power tunakwenda kuitazama nguvu are you ready to receive it are tayari kuipokea to receive it and use it you can kutumia. give the lord a clap offering waweza kumpatia bwana dhabihu ya makofi soma pale but we cannot speak about the power of resurrection lakini hatuwezi kuzungumzia nguvu ya kufu kuzungumza kufu kifo cha msalaba mauti ya msalaba without talking about the death on the cross alafu kuwepo kaburini and then he's dwelling in the alafu tomb akafufuka and then his resurrection bwana yesu asifiwe pray the lord jesus what happened nini kilitokea what happened when jesus was on the cross nini kilitokea kristo yesu alipokuwa pale wataalamu wanasema alikuwepo pale msalabani expertise says he was there on the cross kwanza saa 
As, um, kabla ya mchana, uh, before noon na ilipofika saa sita, and when it reached 12 mchana mpaka saa tisa, 12 noon until Biblia 9 pm pm the bible says kwa maandiko tulio tunakwenda kuyasikia the scripture we are going to ya kwamba kulikuwa na giza it was total darkness it was total darkness kulikuwa kuna giza on the whole world ulimwenguni kote hebu fikiria just imagine giza kabisa total darkness giza tororo total darkness kudhihirisha to, to confirm that kudhibitisha to confirm that ya kwamba Yesu yuko msalaba that Jesus is on the cross na wataalamu wanasema manake nini and expertise says what does it mean ni kwa nini kulikuwa na giza why it was total darkness for 3 hours kwa masaa matatu that darkness giza lile represents liliwakilisha physical and spiritual darkness upon the human life nguvu ya kimwili ya giza ya kimwili na kiroho juu ya juu ya mwanadamu Mungu alikuwa anataka kuonyesha God wanted to show jinsi ambavyo mwanadamu alikuwa amekufa kiroho how men died in the spirit it was total darkness ilikuwa ni giza totoro amina amen indicating likionyesha symbolizing likiwakilisha spiritual darkness uh, giza katika roho lakini pia physical darkness lakini giza katika namna ya kimwili upon the earth juu ya ulimwengu that without god kwamba pasipo mungu there is no light hapana mwanga hapana nuru in the world katika ulimwengu there is no without god pasipo mungu there is no security hapana ulinzi in man's life katika maisha ya mwanadamu na wataalamu wa theology and expertise walikuwa wanasema pia kwamba ilikuwa inaonyesha it shows ya kwamba mungu alikuwa amemtenga kabisa yesu kristo that god set apart jesus christ it was showing also total separation ilionyesha kutengwa kamili 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 of jesus to god Wa Yesu kutoka kwa Mungu. Lakini pia inatuwafundisha nini? But also it shows us that dhambi sin inatutenga na Mungu. Separate us from God. Dhambi inakutenga na Mungu. Sin separate us from Hakuna God. Hakuna kitu chochote. There is nothing else. Kinachoweza kukutenga na Mungu. We can separate you from God. Mungu hawezi kujitenga kutoka kwako. God cannot separate himself from Mungu you. Mungu yuko yuko ananyosha mikono yake. God has welcomed you kwa with his hand. Kama mwanadamu akimwambia karibu. To man welcoming Lakini him. kitu kinachoweza tu kumtenga. But one thing which can separate. Asije kwenye mikono ya Mungu akawa salama. For a man going to a Asiwe na usiano na Mungu. Not to have a good relationship. Asiwe na ushirika na Mungu. Not to have a fellowship. Asiwe na mawasiliano na Mungu. Not have a communication with it God. It is sin. Ni dhambi. Church. Kanisa. Sin. Dhambi. Will separate us. Lita tutenga. With God. Na Mungu. Beware of sin. Uwe makini na dhambi. Beware of sin. Uwe makini na dhambi. Don't dwell in sin. Usidumu katika dhambi. Don't dwell. We have been risen with Christ. Tumefufuka pamoja na Kristo. We cannot live in sin. Hatuwezi kuishi dhambini. It is impossible. Haiwezekani. It is totally impossible to us. Haiwezekani kabisa kanisa. Sisi ambao tumekufa naye. Who we who died. Tukafufuka naye. And reason with. Kwa njia ya ubatizo. Through baptism. Hatuwezi hasha. We can never. Hatuwezi kamwe. We can never. Kamwe. Never. Kamwe. Never. We ever. cannot continue living in sin because we know that sin will separate us from God. We cannot hear God. We cannot communicate with God. And cannot do His work. So, this Easter. He, pasaka hii. This Easter. Pasaka hii. This very Sunday. Katika Jumapili hii kweli kweli. Separate yourself. Jitenge wewe mwenyewe. From sin. Mbali na dhambi. Young man. Kijana. The pastor can, maybe cannot see you. Labda mchungaji hawezi kukuona. A brethren cannot see you. Labda mchungaji hawezi kukuona. Lakini Mungu. But God. Lakini Mungu. Will see you. Atakuona. Alafu unajidanganya. And then you align to yourself. It is for your disadvantage. Ni kwa ajili ya hasara yako mwenyewe. It is for your loss. Ni kwa kukosa kwako mwenyewe. Because you are separating yourself. Kwa sababu unajitenga wewe mwenyewe. 
na Mungu. Let us be aware. Tuwe makini. Let us be aware. Tuwe makini. Everywhere. Kila mmoja. As we are living. Tunapoishi. Everywhere. Kila mmoja. As we are working. Tukiwa tunatembea, separate yourself. Jitenge mbali from sin. Na dhambi. In a situation, hali yoyote, in a circumstance, hali yoyote, which will make you see, itakayo kufanya ufanye dhambi. Run! Kimbia! From those circumstances. Kutoka katika sehemu. Run! Kimbia! From the situation. Kutoka kwenye mazingira hayo. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three. Number three. The Bible says. Bible na sema. How to soma kwa sababu ya muda? Utanisomea ile shina na. Taka po kwambi. Number two. Number two. What happened? Nini kina tokea? On the cross. Pali msarabani. The earth. Dunia. Quaked. Ili tikisika. There was an earthquake. Kulikuwa kuna tetemeko. The earth. Dunia. Quaked. Ili tikisika. Divya unavosema. That's what the Bible says. Ya kwamba yesu wakiwa pali msarabani. That when Jesus was on the cross. Wakati ya nakata roo. As when he was dying. Tuni. Dunia yote the whole earth ilitikisika shaken everything kila kitu kukawa na tetemeko kuu and it was a great kwa nini kulikuwa na tetemeko why it was a great earthquake nature asili was responding ilikuwa inaitikia nature asili was responding ilikuwa inaitikia nature asili was declared declare ilikuwa inatangaza that you are the lord of kwa, lords kwamba wewe ni bwana wa mabwana you are the lord of lords kwamba wewe ni bwana wa mabwana milima oceans bahari hills vilima non living things vitu visivyoishi and living things na vyote viishi we are declaring vilikuwa vikitangaza that you are the lord kwamba wewe ni bwana you are the living god wewe ni mungu you yeah. are the creator wewe ndiye muumbaji you are the savior wewe ndiye mwokozi amen amen lakini pia but also the devil shetani ibilisi ni you Alijua that we have crucified kwamba tumemsulubisha the wrong person mtu asiye sahihi ukisoma katika kile kitabu cha wakolosai if you read the book of colossians soma pale wakolosai colossians wakolosai the book of colossians sura ile ya pili chapter 2 sura ile ya Sura ya pili mstari wa 14 na 15 soma haraka pale 14 soma kwanza Tai wakolosai sura ya pili mstari wa 14 akisha kuifuta ile hati iliyoandikwa ya kutushitaki kwa hukumu zake sikia kulikuwa na hati there was a letter iliyokuwa inamshtaki mwanadamu which condemned the man ndugu zangu My brethren. Mimi nafikiri wakati mwingine hatujui uthamani wa wokovu. I think sometimes we don't understand the value kabisa, of salvation. Kabisa. Surely. Wewe unaweza ukafikiria wokovu ni dini. Sometimes you think wokovu salvation si is dini. religion. Salvation is not religion. Kuokolewa si kitu kidogo. To be to be saved is not a small thing. Si wote wenye hekima. No all people has wisdom. Si wote wanaojulikana. Not all people are known. Wanaojua siri hii jamani. Who knows this mystery? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Na, na ndio maana unajua something you don't value unajua kitu sicho kithamini uh, something you don't know kitu sicho kijua you don't value it hawezi kukipa thamani na nimekujua kwamba kanisa wengi sana and i've come to know that they don't know the secret and the source of our redemption most of us we don't know siri na chanzo cha wokovu wetu and that's why we don't value our salvation mm-hmm. and our life with jesus after salvation ndio sababu hatuyapi thamani hatuipi thamani wokovu wetu na maisha yetu na kristo baada ya wokovu lakini pasaka hii but this uh, hebu thamini wokovu wako value your salvation there is someone there, kuna mtu mmoja who died ambaye alikufa for our sins kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu you were sentenced to death ulikuwa umehukumiwa kifo spiritually katika roho and no one na hakuna yeyote could have redeemed you angeweza kukukomboa only jesus yesu peke yake kwa hiyo 
kulikuwa na hati so there was a lay ya mashtaka which condemns iliyomshtaki kila mwanadamu which condemns every man shetani alikuwa bwana the devil was the lord juu ya maisha ya mwanadamu above the life of human tulikuwa watumwa we were slaves mwanadamu alikuwa mtumwa man was a slave aliishi chini ya hofu living under fear hakumuona mungu never see god lakini kwa sababu ya ile hati ya mashtaka but because of that letter which condemned lakini biblia inasema but the bible says kristo alipokuwa msalaba when christ was on the cross akaifuta ile hati ya mashtaka then he erased that letter which condemned ile kwa inatushtaki which condemned us afa kasemaje and then he said sadwa kumla cha akisha kuzivua enzi na mamlaka he is summed alizivua principalities and and the powers na mamlaka akamvua shetani and then he took out na silaha zake zote and all of his might na uweza wake wote and all of his mighty akamvua and then he took away akamnyang'anya and then he took uweso wake all the might and akamnyang'anya and then he took na silaha zake and all the weapons alivyokuwa pale msalaba as when he was on the cross akasema akazifanya kuwa nini kuzifanya kuwa mkogo kwa ujasiri akizishangilia katika msalaba akazifanya kuwa mkogo akamwambia shetani huna mamlaka ulishaona mtu anatembea kwa ma, kwa mkogo you know how kwa maringo you are working uh, majestically yani yesu alipokuwa pale msalaba when jesus was on the cross akamwambia bring that and then he said nile nipe hiyo nipe hiyo hati ya mashtaka give me that later nipe give me that huna mamlaka tena you don't have authority yani tena alikuwa mbembelezi you know he was not just alikuwa na mdharau he was akasema akazivua and then he took away enzi na mamlaka akazifanya kuwa mkogo kwa ujasiri na sisi leo and today tuna ujasiri we have a confidence mbele ya shetani before the devil na washirika wake and together with tuna ujasiri we have a confidence tuogopi shetani na washirika wake we don't fear the devil hatuogopi wachawi na waganga we don't fear witches hatuogopi wasomanyota na wapiga bao we don't fear anybody hatuwaogopi we don't fear them. mamlaka yao because they are fully wow all of their power ulishaondolewa was already taken away kwa kazi ya kristo msalaba through the work of jesus christ on the cross amen amen lakini kitu kingine but also another thing akasema pazia la eka they said the curtains at the temple lika pasuka was divided Agano la ka the, the old testament katika ile heka in that temple kulikuwa na mahali pa ua pa ua wa, wa nje there was an outside part alafu kwenye kulikuwa na ua alafu ukumbi alafu patakatifu na patakatifu pa patakatifu the holy of the holiness patakatifu na pa patakatifu pa patakatifu palikuwa pana panatenganishwa na pazia there was a curtain or a veil which separate a holy and holy of the holy tu and only priest mkuu alikuwa anaruhusiwa kuingia pa patakatifu pa patakatifu yani pale kwenye uwepo wa Mungu penye kiti cha rehema the penye highest, sanduku la agano the highest priest was the Once only one year, who could enter into the holy of the holy na alikuwa haingi pale pasipo and he never went there without da without blood. na kama alikuwa na dhambi and if he had sin, alikuwa na fear patakatifu pale they would die wanamvuta and then they mimi nafikiri kuele sinaja kukueleza hilo lakini pazia la hekalu likapasuka but the veil at the temple was separated kuonyesha kwamba to show that everyone kila mmoja can enter into the holy of holies anaweza kuingia patakatifu pa patakatifu every christian kila mkristo every one of us kila mmoja wetu hapa can enter into the holy of holies anaweza kuingia patakatifu you can go direct to god unaweza kwenda moja kwa moja wa mungu na ukaingia ukamuona mungu mungu akasema na wewe kuhusu maisha yako and you can see and god speaks to you kumsubiri nabii without waiting Pasipo for a prophet kudanganywa na nabii without lying by prophet mimi nashangaa I'm wondering. Kwa nini uende kwa nabii kuulizia mambo yako? Why going to a na we una kibali cha kuingia mbele za Mungu na Mungu akazungumza na wewe kuhusu maisha yako? And why you have an authority to go before God and God speak to you? Hivi jamani tunarudi agano la kale. Are we going back to the Agano la kale ndio watu walikuwa naenda kusemea kuulizia kwa nabii. The Old Testament they used to go and ask things about you have to the prophet. Wewe unayo 
akibali nenda mbele za Mungu go before god usikie sauti ya Mungu and hear the voice of god mungu aseme na wewe for god to speak to you kuhusu changamoto ulionayo concerning the challenges kuhusu maisha yako concerning your life hata kama akija nabii even when the prophet comes asiseme tofauti na yale uliosikia kutoka kwa Mungu not to say different from what you know from mimi nashangaa i'm wondering huo ni uchanga kanisa that is child huo mwana wa Mungu grow up child nenda mbele za bwana go before the wenyewe by yourself enter into the holy of holies ingia patakatifu baba takatifu pake kama unaishi kwenye dhambi even if you're living in lakini kama unaishi unatembea na bwana vizuri if you're living in kama una fellowship na mungu if you have a fellowship with god nenda go there kamtafute mungu seek god atasema na wewe and he shall speak to you atasema na wewe he shall speak to you kwa habari ya maisha yako concerning your life atasema na wewe he shall speak to you kwa habari ya biashara yako concerning your business atasema na wewe he shall speak to you kwa habari ya hatima yako concerning your destiny kwa nini mtu mwingine anaje kuambia kuhusu hatima yako why is someone else coming to tell that you about your right. destiny he or she sawa that is not right he or she sawa no 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 hapana hapana hallelujah hallelujah church kanisa let us let us go and return hebu twende na turudi to the foundation turejee kwenye msingi turejee kwenye msingi let us go back to the foundation una uwezo you have an ability wa kuingia patakatifu ukamtafuta Mungu akasema na wewe akayagusa maisha yako see god and touches your life he is tatufanye hivyo this pastor let us do that. Hivyo. it reminds us to do Kwenye that yetu. into our lives hallelujah 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 usiwe mvivu don't be lazy be in the presence of god uwepo katika uwepo wa mungu tafuta fellowship na mungu seek the fellowship with god alafu mungu akisema na wewe and then when god speak to you utafurahi then you feel joy mungu akigusa roho yako when god touches your spirit utafurahi you feel joy atagusa tu roho yako you not just touches your spirit atagusa na moyo wako you touch your heart atagusa na mwili wako you touch your body atagusa na maisha yako you touch your life kwa nini usikie shahuda za watu why hearing other people testimonies you can have your own testimony waweza kuwa na ushuhuda wako kuna mtu anaweza kuwa na testimony yake mwenyewe no one can ever have his own testimony na bi aseme kuhusu maisha yake while you are still waiting for a prophet speaking no. about you no 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 hapana hapana haleluya haleluya ya mwisho and last one akasema miili ya watakatifu so the body of the holies waliokuwa wamekufa those who died ikaonekana Yerusalemu were seen in Jerusalem kuonyesha kwamba to show that kuna ufufu there is a resurrection Daman, kuna maisha baada ya kifo there is a life after death kuna maisha baada ya kifo there is a life after death church kanisa haleluya haleluya now what is pastors Uh, siku hizi wachungaji hatuzungumzi sana maisha baada ya kifo we don't speak much about life after death prepare yourself jiandae hivi ulishaomba hata siku moja have you ever prayed even once mbona tunaomba sana kwa habari ya maisha yetu why we are mungu bariki so much about our yangu ni bariki kazi ya ulishaomba kwamba maisha yako baada ya kifo ya, ya wewe mungu have you ever prayed about your life after, after death eh eh ama mnaona dhambi ama mnaona yani there is death kuna kifo there is life after death kuna kifo kuna maisha baada ya umeshaomba hayo have you prayed about it umeaombea maisha yako are you praying about kwamba umalize vizuri that you finish well na baada ya hapo ufufuke na kristo and after then you resurrect with jesus christ tukumbuke hivyo let us remember that there is life after death kuna maisha baada ya kifo hata kama ungekuaje even no matter how you are na kifo hakingojei and death does not wait Mpaka for nobody you know, you know, until you are at a certain age death can come at any time kifo chaweza kuja wakati wowote and ah it is like a cv ni kama cv cv and ah cv yako uh, prepare your cv wasifu wako amen and ah yeah. wasifu wako prepare your cv tumikie bwana mapema save god early huko ni kuandaa wasifu that is preparing yourself tembea na mungu vizuri walk with god huko ndio kuandaa wasifu that is how you prepare your cv bwana yesu asifiwe praise the lord jesus hallelujah 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 jina la bwana libarikiwe the lord Woo-hoo. i feel the anointing nasikia upako the presence of god uwepo wa mungu is here uko hapa there is army of angels kuna jeshi la malaika nataka ni kuhakikishie kabisa i want to ensure you there is army of angels kuna jeshi la malaika jana wakati naomba yesterday as i was praying mungu akaleta kitu cha ajabu ndani ya moyo wangu then god brought something amazing in my mungu and that was, is it god or what akaleta neno pa ndani ya moyo wangu he brought a word in my heart like akasema 
And then he said, I have destroyed the works of their hands. And then it came first because they have been led by their emotions. They are led by their own will. And then the word came. And then I have destroyed the works of their hands. And then I started I forgot that word completely. And then I said all the places I found and later I came to realize it in excess list. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Read there. These are wasifu. Excellent. Ngoja <laughs> Chapter 5. Uh-huh. Tano. Mstari ule soma kwanza ule mstari wa tano. Mstari wa kwanza. Verse verse. Mobiri wa kwanza. Mm. 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 Usiseme maneno ya ujinga kwa kinywa chako wala moyo wako usiwe na haraka unaenda mbele za Mungu kwa maana Mungu yuko mbinguni na wewe upo chini kwa hiyo maneno yako na yawe machache kwa maana ndoto huja kwa sababu ya shughuli nyingi na sauti ya mpumbavu kwa njia ya wingi wa maneno wewe ukiwekea Mungu ukimwekea Mungu nadhiri usikawie kuiondoa kwa kuwa yeye hawi radhi na wapumbavu basi uiondoe hiyo uliyoiweka nadhiri mm. ni afadhali usiweke nadhiri kuliko kuiweka usiondoe mm. usikiache kinywa chako kuukosesha mwili wako wala usiseme mbele ya huyo malaika ya kwamba umepitiliwa kwani Mungu akikukasirikie akikukasi sauti yako na kuiharibu kazi ya mikono yako. Neno hilo likaja kanisa. That word came to me church. Lakini akasema hivi. And then he said. Wamekwenda kwa hisia zao. Wamejiongoza kwa hisia zao na matakwa yao. Na mimi nimeharibu kazi za mikono yao. And I have destroyed the works of their hands. And as I was meditating I asked myself God. And then later on I heard in my heart. There are so many people who are making vow. When they enter the in the in the house of God. Waingiapo nyumbani mwa Mungu. Ama wanapofurahi. Or when they are happy. Wanamwambia Mungu nitakufanyia hivi na hivi. They tell God I will do so and so. Na nyingine unasema peke yako hakuna mtu anayejua. And some of them they say themselves no one knows. Lakini nilichukua nataka kama ulimwambia Mungu kimoyo moyo. I want to tell if you you talk Kwamba to God. Kwamba hivi na hivi kwenye maisha yako. That you do so and so in Kwa ajili ya Bwana. Because of the Lord. Mungu anasema. God says. Ulienda kwa ulitamka haraka na Mungu hana dogo Mungu ameichukulia kama ni nadhiri Timiza Lolote ulilosema peke yako Sio ni mwaka jana mwaka juzi Ukasema nitafanya hivi Kwenye maisha yangu kwa ajili ya Bwana Sio nitafunga labda mara ngapi kwa wiki Ama nitatoa nitafanya hivi ama nitasupport yatima Ama nitasupport wajani Chochote kama matema nitamtumikia Mungu kwa nguvu zangu zote Na Mungu amefanya kile kitu Kato Go and give. Fanya hivyo. Amesema anaharibu kazi za mikono yetu. He said he destroys the works of our work. Amen. Amen. Mbona mmeniangalia vibaya? Amen. 
Ni neno nimekumbuka niwaambie. I have remember that word. Lakini tuangalie turudi tena. But let us see. Kwa habari ya Yesu Kristo kuwepo kaburini. Concerning Jesus Christ being in the grave. Alafu tutazungumza kwa habari ya nguvu ya ufufuo. And then we shall speak the power of resurrection. Na tutamalizia. And then we'll be winding up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How Jesus was buried. Namna Yesu alizikwa. Biblia inasema utakuja kusoma tu pale. I will go there to read. Biblia inasema The Bible says Jesus was buried by Joseph. Yesu Kristo alizikwa na Yusufu. Hebu soma pale kijana wangu basi hapo tusome. Go read there. Bila ile Matayo 27 mstari wa 57 Hata ilipokuwa jioni akafika mtu tajiri wa Arimathaya jina lake Yusufu naye mwenyewe alikuwa mwanafunzi wa Yesu mtu huyu alimwendea Pilato akauomba mwili wa Yesu ndipo Pilato akaamuru apewe Yusufu akautoa mwili akauzonga zonga katika sanda ya kitani safi akauweka katika kaburi lake jipya alilokuwa amelichonga mwambani akavingirisha lile jiwe kubwa mbele ya mlango wa kaburi akaenda zake na pale walikuwapo Mariamu Magdalena na Mariamu yule wa pili wameketi kulielekea kaburi hata siku ya pili amen amen bwana yesu asifiwe sana praise the lord jesus jamaa nikajifunza nini hapa and then i learned something there ya kwamba kumbe tunahitaji watu wa kila aina we kwenye need, ufalme we need all kinds of people in the kingdom tunahitaji kila mtu kila kila watu wa aina ndani ya we kanisa we need all kind of people in the church wakina wakina petro peter wahubiri preachers walikimbia they run away waliogopa they were afraid wote kabisa all of them lakini yupo mtu mmoja. But there is one person. Na wanasema huyu alikuwa ni mjumbe kwenye ile kanseli ya makuha. And they said he was a member in, in, in the council in the high school. Lakini alikuwa ni mwanafunzi wa siri wa Yesu. But he was a secret uh, di- disciple of Jesus Christ. Alikuwa anaitwa Joseph. His name was Joseph. Lakini wakasema alikuwa ni mtu mwenye uwezo. He was a very rich guy. Akapata courage. And then he had a courage. Number one, kwa sababu alikuwa ni member wa ile council. Number one, because he was a member of that council aliweza kwenda akaomba ule mwili wa Yesu could go to ask for the body of Jesus alafu akauchukua akaenda kuuzika kwenye kaburi lake and then he took it and lilikuwa ni kaburi la Joseph alikuwa ameliandaa amen amen so church we need such people kwa kanisa tunahitaji watu wa namna hiyo ndio maana tunajifunza namna ya kuwa na ya, ya kuwa na hospitality kwenye kile kipindi chetu cha ta, Sunday school how to be kuwa wakarimu amen ndio maana tunajifunza kwa habari ya masaidiano kile kipindi ambacho mzee wa kanisa kwamba we want Mungu anataka watu wote hao waje kanisani. God wants all Watatusaidia jamaa. They will help us. Tunahitaji matajiri. We need rich people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wawepo kanisani. Kuna mambo ambayo sisi hatutaweza kuyafanya. There are things we are not Kuna mambo ambayo askofu hataweza kuyafanya. There are things bishop cannot manage. Kuna mambo ambayo mimi siwezi kuyafanya. There are things I cannot. Kuna mambo mengine wote hapa tutaweza kuyafanya. There are things all of us. Lakini wakiwepo wao. But when we have them. Watatusaidia. They will help us. Kwa hiyo tuwe na ma tuwe pia makini tuwe yani kanisa letu tuwe tutafute watu wote tuwafikie kind of people reach to them amen amen lakini kitu cha ajabu kilichonifurahisha tena and one another thing wale wanawake those women unafikiri walimwacha Yesu you think they left jesus wanaume wote all men they deserted jesus they ran away from lakini wale wanawake wanamfuata tu but the women they still they were still going to ndio hao hata wali walikuja kuwaonyesha wakina petro kwamba kaburi liko wapi kwa maana walienda na mpaka ukaenda na na josephu wakajua pale alipomzika yesu wanawake women sasa si semi ni wanawake tu nasema hivi you can think that you are weak and you can't do anything in the in the kingdom waweza kudhani wewe ni mdhaifu na uwezi kufanya chochote katika ufalme manake wanasema wanawake ni wadhaifu ni viumbe dhaifu because they used to say that women are weak vessels ndivyo inavyosema biblia that's how the bible says sasa mimi nakuja hivi sisemi tu kwa wanawake but i'm not speaking this to women lakini nasema kwamba every person lakini kila mmoja in the kingdom katika ufalme is valuable 
ni wa thamani we ni wa thamani is valuable ni wa thamani ni wa thamani kila mmoja usijifikirie wewe kwa yani jitoe do not think kuna nafasi yako usijifikirie kwamba ni mnyonge uweze kufanya kitu no hapana every one of us kila mmoja miongoni mwetu do your part fanya sehemu yako do your part fanya sehemu yako kama sio hao wanawake if not among women wakina petro angejua kaburi liko wapi Peter could never know that the Alafu pia usimdharau mtu. And also don't despise anyone. Hatudharau mtu kanisa hatudharau mtu. Despise anyone. Jua hivyo. Know that. Alimradi umekuja kwa Bwana. As long as you have come here. Alimradi umekuja hapa. As long that you have come here. Ka hapa. Stay here. Tunatamani tukufundishe. We want to teach you. Ili ujue sehemu yako. So you can know your part. Ni nini kwenye ufalme? What is your part in the church? Utumike to serve. Na utaleta baraka. And to bring blessing. Kwenye kanisa. To the church. Na utaleta baraka. And you bring blessing. Kwenye ufalme wa Mungu. To the kingdom of God. Na utakuwa na thawabu. Then you shall have your reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tumeelewa pamoja? Do we understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jamani wakina Martha wapo? Martha are here. Wakina Maria Magdalena wapo? Do we have Magdalenes? Are you here? Kile mambo madogo madogo fanyeni. Those little things do. Mimi namshukuru sana Mungu. I thank God. Kwa ajili ya kina Maria Magdalene. Because of Mary Magdalene. Ambao kila siku tukija. Who every time we tunakuta come, kanisa limefagiliwa. We find the, the churches. Mimi mpaka siku moja askofu wangu akaniambia hivi wa mkoa, vikao tunafanyia hapa. So one day my bishop Vyote vya mkoa, vya jimbo. Akasema mama kitu kimoja nataka nikutie moyo. One thing I want to encourage. Kanisa lako ni safi sana. Your church is clean. Sasa ni wa kina Maria Magdalena. Um, Mary Wapo. Magdalena. I hear. Mkiona mazingira masafi. If you see the environment. Kienda kule choni ukakuta jamani kuko vizuri. If you got the torrent. Wa kwa kina Maria clean. Magdalena. There is a Mary Magdalena. Hatuwajui. We don't know them. Yamkini huwajui. Maybe you don't know. Mimi nawajua. I know them. Kwa sababu nakuja hapa kila siku. Because I come here every time. Lakini mnakuja Jumapili kwa Jumapili. For those who come Sunday after Sunday. Naweza msiwajui. You may not know them. Si mmekuja asubuhi. You came here in the morning. Tulikuja nikakuta wakina Maria Magdalena wanafuta viti. I came and I found them cleaning up uh, all these chairs. Hebu tuwapigie wakina Maria Magdalena. Makofi. Mungu awabariki. May God bless you. Na wewe jipatike basi. Jipatike. Amina. Tunaandaa CV jamani. That's how we are preparing our wasifu. Tondo tunaandaa CV. This is Naomba tusome. Let us read katika kile kitabu in the book Hiyo hiyo 62 Soma pale. Matthew 27:62. Soma pale. Matayo 27 mstari wa 62. Mm. Hata siku ya pili ndio iliyo baada ya maandalio wakuu wa makuhani na mafarisayo wakamkusanyikia Pilato wakasema Bwana tumekumbuka kwamba yule mjanja alisema alipokuwa kali hai ba- baada ya siku tatu nitafufuka basi amuru kwamba kaburi lilindwe salama hata siku ya tatu wasije wanafunzi wake wakamwimba na kuambia watu amefufuka katika wafu na udanganyifu wa mwisho utapita ule wa kwanza. Pilato akawaambia, "Mna askari, nendeni mkalilinde salama kadiri mjuavyo." Wakaenda wakalilinda kaburi salama kwa kulitia lile jiwe muhuri pamoja na wale askari walinzi. Amen. Amen. Hebu soma katika kile kitabu cha Yo, natafuta mahali pale ambapo afu tuangalie kidogo tofauti. Let's see the difference. Uh, Luke. 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 
Sura ile ya ya shinane. Chapter 24. Mstari ule wa kumina na kumi. Mstari wa kumi verse, utasuma na kumi na moja. Verse 10 through 11. Luka shirena nene mstari wa kumi. Nao ni Mariamu Magdaleni na Yohana na Mariamu mama ya Kobo. Na wale wanawake wengine waliokuwa pamoja nao mm. hao waliwaambia mitume habari ya mambo hayo mm. maneno yao yakaonekana kuwa kama upuzi kwao wala hawakuwa sadiki lakini Petro aliondoka akaenda mbio hata kaburini i wanted that look here tizama wale makuha those uh, na watu wote waliomsulubisha and all people who crucified walikumbuka they remembered. Wakasema jamani. And they say, Huyu mjanja alisema atafufuka. Say that he would be risen from the dead. Akasema nendeni wakaenda kwa Pilato wakamwambia tunaomba kaburi likalindwe. Please uh, uh, let us guide the, the Na wanasema walili mpaka walili seal. Wakalitia muhuri. Mpaka mpaka uh, yani kwa nasoma maelezo mengine mpaka walihakikisha lile iwe wameweka na kitu mpaka simenti huku pembeni kusiwe na nafasi kabisa kwa maana wakaweka na kamba. They make sure they are walisema anaweza akaja akafufuka. Na pao ndio maana wakaweka na walinzi. That's why they even put down. Kuhakikisha kwamba hafufuki lakini waliamini kwamba sure anaweza akafufuka. Lakini unaona kwa wanafunzi tofauti. But you see it is different. Wale wanawake walivyokwenda wakawaambia wale mitume kwamba amefufuka Biblia inasema wakasema wa hawakuamini. Then he is really the ni waongo. They say you are lying. You can see? Mwaweza ona. The difference? Tofauti. That the enemy kwamba adui keeps on the church yanazuia kanisa anafanya sisi tusiamini mambo Mungu aliyoyasema to believe things which God has said mpaka leo till today hiyo roho inafanya kazi that spirit operates yale mambo Mungu aliyoyasema the things which God has said yale Mungu Mungu anayosema na sisi the things which God is speaking hata nikisema hapa naona malaika when i say i can see kuna wengine wanasema Mungu some people are saying hata nikisema leo Mungu amesema hivi na hivi when i say God said so no way then ni kwa sababu hiyo roho ilianza tangu kwa wa, kwa kwa mitume that spirit was there since disciples hatuamini we don't believe hata kama utasikia ujumbe hapa mpaka ukagaga na chini ukatoa na machozi no matter how the message ukienda tu hapo ukitoka tu when you go outside the gate you forget everything kile ambacho Mungu amesema what god has said lakini but shetani anajua devil knows like only if you hear ikiwa tu utasikia and you understand na kuelewa and believe na kuamini you will see the glory of god utaona utukufu wa mungu you will experience the power of the resurrection utaona nguvu ya ufufuo so he's keeping the church hivyo anaendelea kulifanya kanisa from believing liache kuamini from trusting kutoka kwenye kuamini what god has spoken kile ambacho mungu amekisema to his church kwa kanisa lake what god has spoken ambacho mungu amekisema to your life kwenye maisha yako na ndio maana akasema yesu akasema jesus said tunapolisikia neno when we hear the word ni kama mbegu it is like a seed mbegu nyingine zinaangukia kwenye njia some other seed are falling across baada ya muda tu shetani anakuja analichukua after time the devil comes and takes you away he doesn't want you kwa maana ukilikumbuka ukaliweka ndani ya moyo wako put it in your heart utaamini you will believe utakuwa na imani you will have faith you will experience the power of resurrection you will experience the power of god you will experience changes in your life you will experience miracles you will experience the hand of god moving in your life ona mkono wa mungu kitembea maishani mwako that's why he's keeping the church from believing kuacha kuamini so we have to open to work upon that kwa tunatakiwa tufanyie kazi hilo don't be among those people who are not believing. Usiwe miongoni mwa watu wasioamini. Mmenisikia kanisa? Do you hear me church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pasaka hii. This Passover. Kila mtu 
Each one of us. Kila mtu binafsi. Each one of us Rudi kwenye maandiko. Go back to the scriptures. Nenda kasome hata hayo basi jamani. Go hata hayo tunayowafundisha. Which we are teaching Kaya about. Rudie. Go and read Ili it again. Maana unaposoma na kusoma na kusoma over and over again. Imani inaumbika. Your faith is born. Unaamini. And then you believe. Na ukiamini. And as you believe. Utamwona Mungu. You shall see the Lord. Kwa maana Mungu hawezi kufanya. Because God cannot do. Pasipo sisi kuamini. Without us believing. Hata kama angehubiri Jamani mhubiri anashuka na moto. No matter how the preacher can preach. Kama hakuna imani. If there is no faith, we cannot receive. Hatuwezi kupokea. We cannot see breath, our breakthrough. Hatuwezi kupokea upenyo wetu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So wakajua. So they knew. Wakasema kwamba kamweke weka nani weka kaweke kaweke walizi. And then they said put God. Hallelujah. There. Hallelujah. But because Lakini kwa sababu it is was written that he must be raised kwa from the dead. Lazima tufuke kutoka kwa wafu. Nothing kept him. Hakuna kilichomshikilia. Nothing kept him. Hakuna kilichomzuia. Jiwe alikuzuia. Not even a storm. Maskari ya wakuzuia. Not even God. Amefufuka. He is risen. Amefufuka jamani. He is risen. Yes, amefufuka. Yes, amefufuka. Katika wafu. For the day. Ya ufufuwe. By the power of resurrection. Amefufuka. He is risen. Nguvu yake ya ufufuo. The power of resurrection. Inatufundisha nini? Teaches us. Inafanya nini? What does it do? Nguvu ya ufufuo inafanya The power of resurrection. Nguvu ya ufufuo. The power of resurrection. It brings inaleta life uzima and hope na tumaini to the fallen world. Kutoka kwenye ulimwengu huu jamani wapendwa. Brethren. Oh hallelujah. Yaani napiga kelewi kama mwanamke wa kichaga. <laughs> yaani jamani imeleta uzima. It has brought na matumaini. Life and hope. Dunia ilikuwa ina matumaini. The world has no hope. Shetani alituweka chini ya utumwa. Alituweka chini ya hofu. Alituweka kwenye mashaka. And of fear. Lakini Kristo kwa nguvu yake ya ufufuo ameleta matumaini ameleta uzima ameleta uhai kwa dunia iliyokosa matumaini leo hii today tumaini lako lifufuke leo hii Today una uzima. You have life. Usishi tena katika mashaka. Don't live in fear. Usishi tena katika hofu. Don't live in fear anymore. The power of resurrection. Kupia ufufu. Removes fear. Inaondoa hofu. Gives us boldness. Aina ina ujasiri. Ujasiri. Peace. Amani. Fear cannot withhold us. Hope waiwezi kutushikilia. Fear cannot withhold us. Hope waiwezi kutushikilia. Doubt cannot withhold us. Mashaka haiwezi kutushikilia. Kwa damu ya Yesu, kwa mabosu ya Yesu, nimesamehewa, nimesamehewa. Kwa damu ya Yesu, kwa damu ya Yesu, nimekombolewa, nimekombolewa.
habari njema sana anawaelekeza namna kifo cha Yesu msalabani kilifanyika kwao halafu anakuja kuambia maana ya kufufuka kwake kulikuwa na maana gani akawaambia kwamba alikufa kwa ajili ya madhaifu yetu alikufa kwa ajili ya mauti yetu halafu akafufuka kwa ajili ya uzima wetu sari wa mwisho wa 23 sura ya sita Paulo anakamilisha kwa kusema maana mshahara wa dhambi ni mauti lakini karama ah, ama sawadi ya uzima anaitoa Bwana alikufa kulipa adhabu ya mauti alilipa mshahara tuliodaiwa alikufa kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu akakumbuka tupate uzima